question be agreed to? I'll give the call to the member for Tangi. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I recall the shock that I got when uh, James Masola texted me and said, uh, what's this about the rumour that uh, Don Randall has passed away? And uh, First, I wasn't sure if it was a joke, and I called him up and said, what is this? And then he said that this was the rumour that he had heard. And I remember being really shocked and really hoping that that was incorrect. And then, unfortunately, as events came to pass, we found out, in fact, that that was correct. So, you know, you know, it's something that shook me quite a lot, I have to say. Talking about uh, Don's career, there was some discussion about um, the importance of the Hall's Head booth in 2001. And this is something that I hadn't realised, because there is a certain irony there for, for me personally, and certainly a connection. Because I just moved to Australia, and guess which booth I voted in in the 2001 election? It was Hall's Head. So uh, quite staggering that there is a certain synergy there. Now, Don's a character that has often been misunderstood. Certainly, I have to say, when I first came to this place, I misunderstood him. He came across as uh, quite gruff. and. He, uh, he spoke his mind, and you didn't have a real sense that of the caring nature that was actually inside the man. And it's something that I have to admit, from a personal perspective, it took me a little while to develop. The first time I got some inkling of both Don's personal concern for people, his caring nature, but also how well connected Don was and how well respected he was politically and connected politically indeed was when I had my first pre-selection hassle and Don was tasked of the job to speak to state councillors and see their views on things and then he phoned me and he said, I've got to say that there's a, an awful lot of support for you with state council and we had quite a lengthy discussion, and it was very clear that he had a very significant personal empathy. And I think that part of that obviously was Don's very caring nature, but part of it was that Don had a feeling, uh, had a knowledge of what I went through, certainly through losing the seat of Swan in 1998. And he would know uh, the gut-wrenching feeling that you get with that sort of thing. And cer certainly, I guess, s a level of s being irrelevant to a certain extent. And so Don was very uh, personally supportive at that time. And that's when I first started getting an inkling of Don's caring nature. Subsequent to that, and I want to, there's been a lot of discussion about Don's career, but I'd like to talk a bit more about Don the man. The next thing, area where I got a very clear understanding of Don's uh, personal caring for people was um, when my wife left in July. And uh, I like to think that I presented a, uh, a face where you know, I was not really adversely affected at all. But uh, family, like with Don, for me, is something that's critical, and it's something that really did shake me. And I was, I, I, mean, I mean, the marriage was one thing, but the devastation of the smashing of the family was something that hit me very hard. But uh, I tried not to let that show. But Don is incredibly empathetic, and he obviously perceived the... Um, level of my distress as far as that smashing of the family was concerned. And he was very personally supportive at that time and uh, you, you, you know, was always ready to speak to me and always asking how I was going. And I mean, he wouldn't just take, oh yeah, yeah, it's all good. Uh, he really wanted to know. The next time I uh, got that feeling was um, 
during the events of February this year, uh, when I went uh, on the infamous 7.30 at the time and uh, made certain statements. And Don obviously realised that I'd be feeling very nervous and in somewhat turmoil. I mean, it feels very lonely when you uh, have criticised your leader openly and uh, you're the first person to uh, come out on that. And it was something that was very hard and I felt particularly turmoil with. First person to call me to see how I was going was Don and said, oh, you spoke very well, etc., etc." Once again, someone who had a very clear empathy for people and realised what they were going through and his caring nature coming through again. Um, the member for Calair was talking about political correctness. The problem in this place is that most of the really good, interesting stories about Don you couldn't tell in this place because of political correctness. So I feel somewhat hamstrung with some of those personal stories that I cannot relate to say just what a character Don was. But um, much has said, been said about, as well about Don fighting for what he believed in. And I certainly saw many instances of, of that, as have... Uh, the members on our side of the House, they've seen Don in the party room making very certain that people knew of his view if we were doing things incorrectly. Now, I very much respect that. It takes a lot of guts to stand up and say things that people don't want to hear and that won't necessarily be popular, but that people need to hear.